the great Bujabantan did an interview on the revolt. Did an interview on the revolt. The interview is over two hours long. And this interview was very revealing. It's worth watching. I post a link for the entire interview in the description box. So feel free to check it out. In this video, he talked about politics in the Caribbean, in Jamaica. I like you to take a listen to it because a lot of what he say aligned with many of the things I've spoke about on this channel. So take a listen to what Budja Banton got to say, then I will give my take. What's the two political parties in Jamaica? I don't give a f about political parties. <laughs> That should be one of the political parties. <laughs> you, know, you know, because you see, it's two sides of the same kind. Yeah, absolutely. We hope for change and we, we, we hope say, but you have to understand that a country is basically a corporation which an elected official as a CEO. Mm. Yep. A lot of people think a prime minister run a country, but you have to understand that these motherfuckers are CEO of the company called the country. It's mm. the board. And my board members, they have to answer. Right. Sometimes these board members are so powerful that like these in your pants when they get a phone call from these motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me that in the Caribbean, we cannot improve our standard of living for our people. And as a disaster, I'm going to run going up begging left, right, and center. And these are the same who have came into politics with three thousand dollars in their bank account us and leaving politics with six hundred thousand million million yeah so where this where this month millions come from but the caribbean people are so passive i think they put something in, in our water over the years we're not fighting anymore mm. we're accepting we're not standing up anymore we're laying down right. and these right. we call our politician the real criminals and the real crooks they're enough they're having a blast because there's no check and balance. Check and balance don't come from your cronies. Check and balance come from people who feel the pain. Right. And that's why you see what, like even in Kenya, they were taken aback. They didn't know that the young men and the young women of Kenya had their ducks so much in a row that they could tell each politician what they owned and where they live mm. and where the investments were that shook them. So we realized that, you know, in the region, we have to do better as the leaders. We stop, we need to stop elect people based on their skin color and them being charming. It should be on your mandate. Mm. And we have to hold your feet to the fire right. to accomplish what you promised. It's simple. <laughs> and coming from the islands that historically were the ones fighting. Listen, the islands fought, listen, the first island that fought to free us was Haiti. Haiti. And where is Haiti today? Exactly. In most Caribbean countries who look at Haiti in disgust because they don't see themselves as standing with them, brother, the first nation to fight for free us. And you ask yourself, why is Haiti suffering so much? And why are my Haitians brothers under so much pressure? You know why? Because they stand up against the giant who they should have bowed to and they refuse. Right. And everyone wants them to bow. Haiti, do not bow. Keep standing up. We stand with you. Yep. First and foremost, I want to give Bojibant and his flowers for coming out and speaking on these issues. Bojibant and talk about the country being a cooperation with elective officials as CEO. Isn't this how it was during the time of slavery, where certain people were selected to rule over the masses? And we talk about the transition out of slavery when slavery ended in 1834 they talk about that era for which the slaves had to work for another eight years to pay back the slave masters and even after that the transition was still slow they ensured that they had people in office who will continue to be loyal to them so that they can continue to reign over the people Right, So we had fighters from way back, but these people somehow was able to play the game very well and convince the fighters that they were fighting for them, while at the same time, they were in bed with the rulers. So the common people have to be careful. That is why I always talk about nationality. Do not make nationality your new identity because this is how they divide you. We are the same people. Your nationality should not be your new identity. It is an easy way to manage people. 
you know, by having these different parishes and nationalities and so forth. But you cannot take it to the point where other people can come into your country and know you call yourself one with these new people who are totally different to you. They have another country who customs and norms they follow, who they are loyal to. So we have to be mindful of that in the Caribbean. All we have is the Caribbean. All we have is ourselves. Yes, we are connected to Africa, but right now, Africa have their stuff to deal with. You can think of it as a pie chart. When everyone is waving the same flag as you, and they're claiming that nationality, they don't have the same beliefs, they don't want the same future for the country as you. You are simply a part of that pie chart, and there's someone who owns that pie chart. At one point, we controlled the whole thing when we fought for independence, and we chased the slave masters out of the country, but somehow we allow them to work themselves back in. So now we have a whole bunch of groups now in the country working towards something that has nothing to do with us. And we have forgot about our history and we have forgot about healing. Would you talk about these CEOs having to answer to someone who is much more powerful than them? And when these people call upon them, they will do backflips, cartwheels. They will get up in the middle of the night to ensure that they run across the room and answer the phone calls these people are the rulers just as it was back in the days so the common people we have to understand the power we have in unity but again it's back to the pie chart some of our people some of the people who look like us they want something else they enjoy being under the thumb of these masters they enjoy being servants of these people so people like Bujibantan we have to understand this. When he said we, I would ask him, what do you mean when you say we? Because when you say we, that is only a small sector of the people in the Caribbean. That is only a small sector of Jamaica. That is only a small sector of Trinidad. That is only a small sector of Guyana, St. Kitts, the Virgin Islands, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada. It is only a small percentage of this country. So these people who he's talking about, the we, they are most likely the descendants of the revolutionists, the warriors. We are still there, but we need to connect with each other. Somehow it's going to happen. I have no doubt. But until then, we need to start impacting our community because these sellouts are going after the youths. Their masters are going after the youths. They have their programs and they're teaching the kids about everything except themselves and their ancestors. He said the people are confused as to why their livelihood cannot improve while politicians who come in with just a few thousand dollars leave office with millions and hundreds of millions of dollars and how Caribbean people have become passive. And he wondered if they put something in the water. And I started reflecting on that. I was like, you know what? I remember as a youth, they used to have these trucks or vehicles right in through the community saying that they're killing mosquitoes and spraying that stuff in the sky. I, I don't know what's in there. But guess who knows what's in there? The masters. The ones who's really in charge of that. The people who are operating those vehicles, they're simply doing their job. They don't know what's in that chemical. And he might be right. They might have put something in the water. But then again, we always had sellouts. It's just that today, I don't know. I believe the warriors are still there, but we are somehow distracted with other things. Somehow, they are able to play the game so well that people don't realize that they are at war until it's too late. Right? People come out and march and they complain about them not having access to land that their ancestors had access to. They march, they burn things down, and then they forget about it. And then the people who bought the land, a few years later, they continue with whatever project they had planned. So, we are not persistent, we are not consistent, we are not organized. We are all over the place. So maybe this is what needs to happen. Maybe we need to get back to creating chiefs and Indians or whatever the case is, getting representatives who really represent that parish or that community because your politicians cannot do it. You cannot serve two masters. They have sworn an oath unto the crown 
or unto whoever those cooperation is. They are trying to make their money. They don't talk about their ancestors. They don't talk about us as a people. They don't talk about our history. They're trying to please everyone, which is fine. They're doing their job. But while they do that, it means we have to organize as a people because we have a unique situation that is different to others. We were the one doing it. And I am glad that the guy at the end mentioned it. He knows it. We were the ones fighting. And once we freed ourselves, we inspired everyone else to stand up. We inspired the United States. We inspired Africa and the other places to stand up. We chased them out of the Caribbean. And then they changed their uniform and they came back in suits. And the same people, the ancestors of the same people are back in the Caribbean buying out the Caribbean. So there is no checks and balance. People go to the ballot. People go to vote. They vote. And then that's it. The only time the people come together is when the politicians have a function that pulls the people together. Apart from that, you may have a few people over here talking about politics and another group of people over on the other side talking about politics. Maybe we need to do more. Yeah, we complain a lot, but maybe we need to do more. Maybe we need to start this thing up. Because there's no checks and balance, your politicians only have to listen to the bigger heads, the people with the money. They know that they could promise the common people one thing and then do something else. The common people is not going to really do anything about it. And then the violent criminals have to understand this. Your criminality is one of the reasons why the common people don't really turn on the politicians because they feel like they need to be protected from the violent criminals. And this is also their excuse to build their army, to get more guns, and to strengthen their force, while at the same time, come up with laws that would prevent the common people, the good people, from owning weapons. So the common people have to realize that this is a double-edged sword right here. Because what this does, it also gives the politicians more protection so that when they refuse to do what you ask them to do, you can't do nothing to them because they feel you need them to protect you from the criminals. They feel that they are doing their job by protecting you from criminals. So that is why I say for the criminals out there, the violent criminals, they have to understand how they are feeding into the hand of the politicians and they may have to change what they're doing because if they can win the heart of the people by not committing violent acts against the people then that could be a good thing use kenya as an example we see what's happening over there i made a video on Burkina faso right where the men of the community stood up and no one expected that they didn't think that these people had the wit or the intelligence to pull together like that. And that is what needs to happen once again in the Caribbean. Where the common people pull together and surprise them because we have the numbers to do it. And we have the smarts to do it. But we need to stop allowing them to distract us. We need to stop allowing them to make us promise and change the promise. And then we forgot about the promise that they made. And then the cycle repeats itself over and over again. So I appreciate Kenya, I appreciate Burkina Faso, as well as Haiti for doing what they are doing. Because he used Haiti as an example as well. He told Haiti to never give up, never quit, and that we are standing with you. And it goes back to this right here. Who is we? Because I know a lot of people in Jamaica who claim that they are not Africans. They like to say that out of many one people. And when they say that, they are not talking about them and the other Caribbean people who historically are the same people as them. They are talking about themselves, the Asians that are in their country, the Indians, the Europeans, the Middle Easterners. That's who they are talking about when they say out of many one people. I cannot tell you how many times I see African people on this woman channel, Lana Chin, fighting other African people for trying to check her. And I have never seen one Asian person stand up against that Asian woman. Not one. We are the only ones who do that. Even if her people is against her, even if Lorna Chin's people is against her, they stay quiet. They don't come out in public and bash her and say she's wrong. But leave it 
to these mongoose. I call them mongoose in the Caribbean because we don't have raccoons, right? Leave it to the mongooses. But the reason these people feel so safe that they can do this, because they feel nobody could do nothing about it. And that is why I said the vanguards across the Caribbean, we are more deeply rooted than them. We are more stable than them. We are more powerful than them. I don't care if it is a hundred million of them and it is 1,000 of us. They are shaky and their masters know that they are shaky. Their masters know that they cannot be trusted because their masters look at them and say, Hey, how can you not see what I'm doing to you? How can you be this foolish? You know, the final point I'm going to touch on that he spoke about was to not choose your leaders based on color. And I know that the mongooses and stuff get excited when they hear that because, you know, they always want to be on the master, but they have to understand this. Well, not them, but the vanguards have to understand this. He's saying that because he realized that a lot of the people, even though they are the same people, the same race, the same color, they are just as hypocritical or they are even worse than a lot of those other people. So he's saying that you have to analyze these people. You have to study them and choose who is best for your agenda, which means we have to have an agenda. We have to have a purpose. And then from there, we choose the person who is best for us because the people who look like us can be the worst thing that can happen to us. And that has happened many times throughout history. So we have to get to the point to which we have politicians in place are people running for office who share the same ideas as us, who has the same purpose and goal as us. We have to get to that point once again.